Greenhouse gases dispersed in the atmosphere absorb radiant heat from planet Earth and radiate it back to us. The effect is subtle but powerful. Taken as a whole, greenhouse gases, which make up only a fraction of the atmosphere, keep the Earth 60 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than it would otherwise be. The so-called dry atmosphere consists of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and just 1% of everything else, including carbon dioxide, which is only 388 parts per million of the atmosphere. For this reason, denialists will often say, that small amount of CO2 can't possibly have an effect. Can gases in parts per million make a difference? One example comes from the U.S. Geological Survey, whose website we've been to before. It describes the effects of hydrogen chloride, a volcanic gas, in this way. Concentrations over 35 parts per million cause irritation of the throat after short exposure. Greater than 100 parts per million results in pulmonary edema and often laryngeal spasm. There are, of course, many examples of gases that have profound effects in low concentrations. But denialists have yet another favorite hobby horse they like to bring up. Carbon dioxide is a plant food. It's necessary. Uh, Say that again. Carbon dioxide is what? It's plant food. It's plant food. Yeah. Without it, all plant life and therefore all life that depends so on it. So if we life would decrease the use of carbon dioxide, are we not taking away plant food from the atmosphere? The argument is plants use CO2, therefore more CO2 would be good for plants and crops. Indeed, amateur horticulturists have known for decades that increasing CO2 levels boost the productivity of plants in controlled, isolated settings. It may be that denialists have been relying too much on research conducted under these conditions. More recent controlled studies have been done simulating not just higher CO2 levels, but the whole range of factors that will affect crops in coming decades due to climate change. When expected changes in temperature, moisture, and nitrogen levels are part of the experiment, this Stanford study showed, across all multi-factor manipulations, elevated carbon dioxide suppressed root allocation, decreasing the positive effects of increased temperature, precipitation, and nitrogen deposition on productivity. In contrast to what we've thought in the past, elevated atmospheric CO2 doesn't always stimulate plant growth. When it's combined with other environmental factors, it can actually suppress plant growth. This special soybean field at the University of Illinois, unlike a greenhouse, is exposed to wind, rain, temperature, and pests. Rings of pipes let scientists control CO2 levels around the plants. They found that plants grown under CO2 levels expected in 2050 attracted more bucks. The abundance of insects is greater there, but not only that, insects consume more of that high CO2 leaf than they do of the corresponding leaves grown under current CO2 concentrations. In a paper published by the National Academy of Science, they analyzed the leaves and found that the higher CO2 leaves made much less of a chemical that soybeans use to defend against Japanese beetles. So beetles that ate those leaves lived longer and produced more offspring. This suggests that the entire uh, population growth of Japanese beetles and their population cycle will be accelerated in the future as carbon dioxide goes up. Climate deniers tell us that trees will fare better with increased CO2, and forests are critically important as carbon storage sinks and habitats. How will trees fare under climate change? Observations of experimental forest plots in Europe show that during summer months, forest CO2 uptake normally increases dramatically. In 2003, Europe suffered under a heat wave of historic proportions. As temperatures rose, Data from these plots shows that CO2 uptake by trees declined sharply, up to 50%. These results cast doubt on the idea that plant growth will automatically be accelerated in a greenhouse world. 
but climate change affects trees in other ways as well. All across the western U.S. and Canada, tiny pine beetles that have in previous decades been suppressed by winter cold are surviving in huge numbers and devastating forest populations over a vast area. So what we have is a situation where uh, climate makes the beetle worse, climate change makes the beetle worse, and yet the beetle is making climate change worse. You know, I never thought we'd be praying for sort of six weeks of minus 40 degree weather. I mean, have I lost my mind? <laughs> but <clears throat> that's the only thing that would stop it. But we just don't get that here anymore. With large tracts of dying forests, increased temperatures and drought conditions, wildfires have increased in frequency and intensity, releasing even more locked up carbon into the air. In regions as diverse as Canada, Nepal, and Australia, fires are another climate feedback effect, threatening the ability of forests to store and retain CO2. But there is another factor that affects plant and crop growth. Croplands across the world depend on irrigation from glacier-fed rivers. For decades, glaciers across the planet have been disappearing. And don't let denialists tell you that this or that glacier is expanding. Worldwide, accurate measurements show total glacier mass has been dropping for decades. In many of the world's most populous areas, glacier-fed rivers will begin to dry up in just a few decades even as populations across the globe continue to expand. Population growth and climate change are on a collision course and will only worsen the longer we delay in taking action. While climate deniers continue to confuse, alter, warp, and distort the information, real scientists grow increasingly alarmed about what is happening to our planet. Will we be able to tell future generations that we finally acted together and did the right thing? Or will they be left wondering what we were smoking? Weed is the best way to find out The mind is powerful So if you think in bull It will come to pass, pass So when you live in life Just be extra nice True love is the boss, boss Sensibilia, chalice, nophilia